What's up monster makers? My name is Shar and I'm a professional special effects makeup artist. Today I'm going to be showing you the process of my prosthetic slack jaw zombie makeup. If you have any questions at all about my process or the products I use, please feel free to leave them below. If you get a second to like or subscribe to support my channel, I'd really appreciate it. Alright, let's get into the application. So I'm starting off here with my Narrative Cosmetics Adhesive, just applying it to both the skin and the foam latex prosthetic. This prosthetic is by a shop called Infected Effects. Jeremy does amazing work, and if you're in the market for foam latex, you should check him out. I'm giving some time for my adhesive to dry up a bit before sticking down the foam. That's why you'll see me going from side to side. I'm leaving a small distance without any glue along the edge of the prosthetic and on the skin as well. Once I have the piece down, I glue the edges down by pushing down lightly with my finger along the edge of the prosthetic while slipping the angled adhesive brush underneath to get a nice, smooth blend. After the piece is securely in place, I go around the edges with an orange sponge and my tweezers and some prosade. I usually make between two and three laps around the edge of the piece to build a bridge between the foam latex and the skin of the actor. The stippling effect also helps build some texture up so you don't get a shiny edge. Next, I'm going to powder everything down with the translucent setting powder. As you can see, I've also glued down the eyebrows. Maybe I can do a separate video on that if you guys are interested in seeing my process for it. Once everything's powdered down, I'm going to take a sea sponge and my Mel Pax paint, and I'm going to stipple on my base undertone layer of Pax paint. This is kind of an old school technique as far as I know. I've seen a few artists use it um, and I really like it for creating zombies and monsters. I feel like it gives a really cool modeled and dead or in this case undead effect. Next I'm going in with some red Pax paint where all the muscles are showing on the piece. Whether it's Prosade or Pax paint, you have to go in with some sort of protective layer over your foam latex before going in with any other types of paint. And to top it all off, I'm taking Mel Pack's Dead Flesh and my sea sponge and stippling that over everything. There are tons of color palettes and methods for painting zombies. In this case, I think these deep purples and reds along with this dead flesh really give a nice realistic decaying effect. As you can see, it's starting to come together a little bit more here. I'm going with another layer just to punch in those highlighted areas a little bit more, create even more texture. And then we're gonna powder it down with some translucent setting powder and a big fluffy brush. Now we can move on to the next step of painting, airbrushing. Right here you can see me going in with my Iwata airbrush and EBA Death Burgundy. 
Airbrushing gives a nice, soft, realistic shadow, so I go and punch in any of those shadows I think need to be deepened up. Next, I'm going in with my Narrative Cosmetics Alcohol Palette and doing some speckling here. For the most part, I use my small and large blade brushes with the alcohol paint, though, in this look. While I continue along on this paint job with the alcohol paint, I think it's a great time to talk about today's sponsor of this video. Narrative Cosmetics is a professional grade, production ready, theatrical, and special effects makeup company. Their products are suitable for beginners just looking to get their feet wet and professionals with years of industry experience. They are constantly launching new products and they also just recently started up a pro discount program. In this video, I use the Zombie Alcohol Palette adhesive and remover, the undead cream palette, as well as the special effects brushes, which I love so much. Thanks so much to Narrative Cosmetics for sponsoring today's video. So as you can see here, I've gone in and really yucked up with that alcohol palette still, adding some dripping and decay along the mouth and the nose, some from the forehead too. Now I'm going in with my dual fiber stippling brush and brightening up the white of the bone with the alcohol palette. One of the last steps I'll take here is taking my Narrative Cosmetics cream palette and going in and darkening that under eye area and the eye sockets as well as along the edges and anywhere else I see fit to really punch in that stippling and shadow. I'm going in again with the alcohol palette and adding some drips along the mouth and oozing from wounds. And here's the final look. Thanks so much for watching. Have a wonderful day.